Hi there, this is Brian Bibb, and you may ask yourself, why is he recording a video in his car? Well, there's a good explanation for that, which I will tell you about a little bit later on. But I wanted to tell you that this week we're going to be um, beginning a four-week conversation about the book of Judges. Now, I was very happy to be able to provide some videos last summer about wisdom literature, and folks seem to find them interesting. It's much better to be in person, and I really can't wait to get back to seeing you folks in the flesh, and we can do this the old-fashioned way. But in the meantime, I think we can make some videos that will be thought-provoking and insightful, and maybe um, you can learn a little bit, and uh, I look forward to hearing what you think about. Last year, I got some good emails and some nice, thoughtful comments and questions, and I appreciated those. So I want to encourage you to reach out to me again this year. Now, I recorded... Uh, over the last couple of days, a really nice video in my home studio using my good equipment and my my camera and my you know my computer and everything else. And then last night I was getting ready to put it together to upload, and the file was corrupted. And then this morning at 4 a.m. I had to leave to come onto I had to leave to go on a trip that was planned. And so we are driving. I'm now in Minnesota, and we're driving from the Minneapolis airport up to the Boundary Waters, up above Duluth, and uh, my best friend and I from graduate school at Princeton and I are going to go um, canoe for a week, and I'll be back um, next Monday, and then I'll be able to make the rest of the videos, hopefully from the house, and I won't have those technical difficulties. So we're doing the best we can. I hope that you will um, bear with me a little bit in this particular format. is not ideal. I can't do all the fancy stuff I might try to do in person, but... Um, Hopefully we can get the, the stuff that really, really matters out of the way. All right. Um, so let me start. I want to do three things here in the next few minutes. I'm going to introduce the series and talk about what we're going to be uh, studying over the course of the next month. I want to talk about the book of Judges and the kinds of questions that scholars ask about the book of Judges and the kinds of questions that faithful Christians might want to read when they uh, ask when they read the book of Judges. And then third, we're going to look at some of the stories in the first five chapters. So we'll be dividing it up. You hopefully saw the outline. Chapters one through five was for today, and then six through um, ten or so for next week. First, let me introduce the book of Judges. Now, you may have read Judges before or parts of the book of Judges, and there are some famous characters in there. For example, Samson and Delilah is probably the most famous. And then uh, Deborah uh, would be close behind, probably. But it's filled with some really strange characters and minor characters doing really amazing things. So I think that we can unpack some of those stories as we go. But Judges is part of a larger literary connect collection in the Bible that you might not be aware of. So if you think about the, the order of books in the Old Testament, you've got the first five books, which is the, the Torah or the Pentateuch, Genesis through Deuteronomy. And then we have four books that are together, and scholars believe were collected together by the same editors and redactors. And those four books are Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings. And so what scholars want to argue is that all of those books together are part of what is known as the Deuteronomistic history. Now, that's a very big word, and it's not that important. It's called the Deuteronomistic history. I will just call it the history and refer to the one who collected all these materials and edited them together as the historian. But what happens is you have these small stories from all over the place about all these amazing characters and events, and then they get edited together within one single theological vision that is provided by the, the historian, by the, the collector who's brought this material together. And the theological perspective of the overall collection is a focus on how God is bringing Israel into the promised land, setting them up with the, the monarchy, giving them what they want. And then what we see is that their sin and their rebellion against God and their violence lead ultimately to the downfall of the Israelite and Judean monarchies. And the, so the first thing that happens in Joshua is Israel entering into the promised land. And the last thing that happens at the end of Kings 
is the destruction of Jerusalem and the destruction of Judah and the beginning of the Babylonian exile. So in Judges, we're at the beginning of that story. How does Israel come together? How does Israel come to be in the land? How did they come to control the land? And what kinds of issues were they facing in that process? So we've got that larger context. And again, we're going to be focusing on the individual stories as well. Okay, so that's the first point. How does Judges fit into all the, the collection of the Bible? The second is, what kinds of questions do scholars ask when they read this material? Now, I like to think about this in three categories. One category is historical. And the fact is that we can um, ask historical questions such as, what happened? How close is this book to historical events? How much of this book narrates things that happened? What is this relationship to the events as far as we can uh, collect them? And what does this book have to say about the social world of ancient Israel, the political world of ancient Israel, the religious world of ancient Israel? So it can be a window into those early historical periods. A second kind of question would be more literary what kinds of stories are there? What kinds of characters are there? Now, when we read it, what you're going to see is that these stories are kind of amazing. Some of them are tragic and sad. Some of them are just epic adventures, almost swashbuckling kind of adventures. And then some of them are very humorous. There are, there are comedies and tragedies and, and epic adventures and characters doing all kinds of amazing things all the way through it characterization, poetry, um, the narrative techniques, genre. Like these are all questions about how the stories are written and what kind of cool things can we discover in the way that they are written. The third kinds of question that we can ask is more about the theology or the ideas that are found in this book. And I want to make one very important point here as we begin. And it is this. Christians are kind of trained and accustomed to read uh, biblical stories, biblical passages, and ask the question, what does this mean for me? What is the application of this story for my life? What is the moral teaching, the moral truth of this story? And the fact is, the, the stories in Judges don't function well as stories that you want to read for the purpose of asking what's the moral of the story and, and what is the application of this story to my life. Rather, we, these stories are much more complicated from a theological point of view. God is often in the background of the story. God is often doing some things, but it, it never comes out and says at the end of a story, and this is what God thought about it, this is how God thinks about it, and the moral of the story is, and whatever you do, don't do this, or whatever you do, follow this example. It doesn't prov it's, That's not how the biblical narratives work. It's a different kind of theological process. And the word that I want to put for you, and we're going to be coming back to this, is the idea of narrative ethics, all right? Narrative ethics. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that we can do ethical exploration. We can do ethical um, analysis and thinking around important issues in our life. But how do we do that with these stories? It's through the engagement with the narrative. So think of it like this. The stories invite us into their world. The stories invite us into these amazing occurrences and these amazing circumstances. When we engage these stories, we are invited into the narrative world of the story. And in engaging with that, that narrative, it gives us a, a kind of conversation starter to engage our own stories, our own lives in the reflection of those stories. So you'll see what I mean in a little bit. So as careful Christian readers then, 
we want to pay attention to the larger theological perspective of the literature. We want to read these individual stories very closely and very carefully. And we want to try to engage their meaning and their theology in a very complicated, very nuanced way as much as we can. And what that means is there's not really a right answer a lot of times. A lot of times it's these, 